Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. Today is September 11th, 2024. And this is Ben and Barry on football. What's going on out there, everybody? This is Ben Dickerson. I am your co-host. We just got through week one of the 2024 NFL season. Very exciting week as it was. The anticipation is over. We're into this thing now. So, All right. And we just want to take a minute to uh, remember that today is September 11th um, and the date of one of the greatest tragedies in American history. So we just want to make a point of um, remembrance on that. And talk about the bias plus reports. This is where we talk about the upcoming week's matchups. And Benny, I have some surprises for you. All right, Benny, let's get ready for the first one. How do you like this graphic? No, it's kind of neat. This is an AI generated graphic. All of today's um, bias plus graphics were generated through Copilot, trying something a little new, wanted to have something that at least people could look at and have a little fun looking at. So this is what we got for the bias plus reports. Now again, the bias plus reports uh, provides an idea of how two teams are gonna fare in a matchup. Based on their net points and their turnover differential, that's how we compare. So as I always say to people, if team A, is averaging plus 20 in terms of their net points and, and team B is averaging uh, plus five and team B plays team A, team A is gonna be favored by the difference of 15, which we call the bias. And that will be augmented by turnover differential, uh, which is the plus part of the calculation. So the bias plus where is where we take a look at your actual numbers and compare those numbers. And that's why we say it favors, we, you know, there's no guarantee uh, with anything. And again, this is not, you know, we're not uh, saying this is a gambling thing or anything like that, but this gives you an idea about where these teams are coming from. So we have the Buffalo Bills, Benny, versus the Miami Dolphins. Bias Plus favors the Bills by seven. The Bills. <laughs> So the bias plus favors the Bills on the road. Well, let me just say something about the Bills here real quick. They did win their game last week against the Cardinals. The score was 34 to 28. They did a lot of really good things on offense. The really good thing was they are who we thought they were, or they, at least they are who I thought they were offensively. Uh, they got the ground game going with James Cook. He had some big-time runs. Kept the ball moving. Josh Allen did a lot of good Josh Allen things, hurdling people, crazy stuff like that. Uh, Cook put up 71 yards on 19 carries, but Allen really took over the game. By the way, Cardinals came out roaring and took a 17-0 lead on these boys. They had to come back. But when they started coming back, it was no turning back. Josh Allen, uh, 232, two touchdowns through the air. Two touchdowns on the ground, way too much for the Cardinals to handle. Looked really good. Uh, as far as the Dolphins are concerned, uh, they did pull out the victory at home last week against the Jaguars, two Florida teams, or two of the three Florida teams. Sorry, Tampa Bay. Um, right. Once again, the road team, who was the Jaguars, took a lead into halftime before the Dolphins were able to get it together and come back. Um in very they dramatic fashion, bit, I might say. Yeah, they had a little bit of trouble in the first half, but once they got it going, they were fine. In the second half, they they pretty much completely flipped the script from um, the first half. They got their offense going, and their defense uh, shut the Jaguars out. I was going to say pretty much shut them out, but they flat out shut them out in the second half. Tua had a big day yardage-wise, but that can be a little deceiving because – Two passes he threw. One was a 63-yard catch by Jalen Waddle, and the other one was an 80-yard TD catch and run by Tyreek Hill. So that that led to uh, some big yardage numbers for Tua. 
But make no mistake, he threw the ball really well. Um, and even though they did kind of get things going in the second half, it still took a 52-yard field goal as time expired for them to actually win the game. So uh, they won't be able to afford a slow start against the Bills. And I guess I should say that for the Bills, too, since they'll be on the road. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I don't know that the Jaguars took advantage of the fact that they could have leaned on their running game a little bit more. So I believe the Bills will do that, and I'm going to pick the Bills to win this game. All right. And the Bills had a little bit bigger um, uh, win margin there, so that makes sense. All right, Benny, so let's get ready. We're moving on to the next game in the series. We're talking about the Raiders and the Ravens. Bias plus of 17 favors the Ravens. What do you got? Okay, so the Ravens are on the road to Vegas. They do have the bias. Last week, they played the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead. It was a rematch of the 2023 AFC Championship game. And some people still think it could possibly have been a preview of this year's conference championship, regardless of where the game ends up being planned. Right now, I think the consensus is that these are the two best teams in the AFC. Um, this was a crazy game. It was very, very close, especially statistic. Lamar Jackson's numbers were very close to Patrick Mahomes' numbers. Yardage-wise, the number of throws they made, the number of completions they had, all very, very close, very, very similar. Both quarterbacks threw one touchdown pass, and both quarterbacks turned the ball over once. Uh, but even though statistically the Ravens' defense looked like they played better, they did not win the game because they got outscored on the ground. How weird is that? Okay? The Ravens are supposed to be a running team. This is the same thing people were arguing about and getting mad about with the Ravens last year when they had a chance to beat the Chiefs and go to the Super Bowl, and they played like they weren't the Ravens because they didn't run the ball like they were expected to. Then they go out and get Derrick Henry and still don't run the ball like they were expected to. I don't know what to say about this, but it's got to be fixed and it's got to be fixed fast. Let me ask you a quick question about the Ravens. Because yeah. so often when I hear teams described as having a run game, but a lot of their run yardage is from their quarterback. Um, yeah. Is that still a team with a run game? If you take that quarterback yardage out of that run game, is that still a team with a run game? Well, you can't just look at it yardage-wise. You have to look at it at, at attempts, at carries, okay? If the quarterback, even most dual-threat quarterbacks seldom have double-digit carries. So that means if you're going to be considered a real running team, then your lead running back has got to have a good number of of carries, preferably double-digit carries. Your lead running back. Your lead running back, yes. So in the Ravens' case, you consider them a running team based on that explanation? They're supposed to be. No, I'm talking about in reality. It's only one game. No, but you still got last season. I mean, when you look at their, at their, at their- Yeah, last season, the answer is yes. Okay, so you're saying last season they used their running back during the regular season, well, had way more attempts than the quarterback did. They used three quarterbacks, three running backs. Okay, I mean, your total running backs, I'm not, you know, looking at anyone. Okay, all right, just wanted to ask that question. All right, so what about this game coming up? The Raiders, on the other hand, were on the road last week against the Chargers. They got handled pretty good. Chargers 22, Raiders 10. Main problem, again, a true running team, a true head coach who loves the run game, and a team that does not defend the run very good, which is the Raiders, and they got beat. So, again, if they're going to play a true run team like the Ravens, I expect them to lose again. I'm going to pick the Ravens to win this game. Um the Chargers really took it to them on the ground, and the Raiders really had no answer for it. 
Uh, they got dominated in the time of possession, which is usually what happens when you have a team that's able to control the ball on the ground and finish up drives with uh, points on the board, either the field goals or touchdowns. That's exactly what happened to them. I think it'll happen to them again against the Ravens. All right, going with the Ravens. All right, going with the bias. All right, Benny, next up. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Last plus of 69. 69? <laughs> Favors the Chargers. <laughs> Not only did Carolina get beat on a points basis, oh my God. but they got beat on a turnover basis. And that just pumped up that bias plus number, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> and you remember they were at the bottom of the net points rankings. They were like 31st or something like that. Yeah. They were like 47. They were like minus 47 points. That was awful. That was really awful. Okay. So you got a West Coast team coming to the East Coast, but they have nothing to fear. The Panthers are pretty bad. And Bryce Young is on the verge of being considered a true bust. First round pick, not just a first round pick, but he was the first pick overall in the draft a couple of years ago. And I don't know uh, what it's going to take to get this guy's career turned around. But uh, the Panthers are not a very good team right now. Again, we're talking about a team not only that's not very good defensively, but they're going to face a team in the Chargers that can really hold on to the ball and dominate time of possession with the run game. I expect them to do that again. I'm going to go with the Chargers in this one. Not exactly going out on the limb there, Benny. For the Panthers? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay. Going with the Chargers. Our ball will be 2-0. All right, next up, we have the Saints versus the Cowboys, the bias plus of 21, Benny. Favors the Saints. Mm. Mm. So the Saints had a big game last week, but they played the Panthers. Yeah. They beat them 47 to 10. <laughs> Panthers had nothing to offer them. The Saints actually look good. I'm, I'm not just going to say it was because they played the Panthers. They actually did look good in that game. Uh, Derek Carr threw the ball well. They ran the ball well with Kamara and Jamal Williams. And they threw the ball pretty well, too. Uh, I really don't think that's going to be enough against the Cowboys, though. Dak's got his new contract. I'm hoping that he will continue to play. I, I tell you what, I read something today. This was funny. I read something today that said, People are disappointed that he signed that contract. And I understand why they're saying that. They were hoping that he would say, you know what? Screw that. I'll play under the contract I'm on now. I'll ball out and I'll go free agent next year and really break the bank. And there's a good chance if he did, in fact, do that, that he could make more than 60 million a year. But he went for security, signed a four year deal. Got 90% of a guarantee, and now he's the highest paid NFL player. So good for Dak. In the meantime, he's throwing the ball well. Zeke Elliott's running the ball well, and the Cowboys defense looks pretty strong. I'll have to go with the Cowboys at home against the Saints. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, again, Saints played the, the Panthers, and, and, you know, Bryce Young, I'm, I'm feeling sorry for him, but I, I'm feeling like the Carolina Panthers – outsmarted their own self <laughs> in this one. So I don't feel sorry for them one iota. Let's look at the next game coming up, Benny. This looks like a good one. We have the Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. Both had pretty good games last week. The bias plus of 11, however, favors the Buccaneers. <laughs> I would say, well, obviously, since we went over the rank, how we do them, that's kind of self-explanatory. The Buccaneers had a really good game, and they didn't give up a whole lot of points. The Lions had a really good game, too. 
unfortunately, it was a bit of a slugfest. So <laughs> that's going to put them a little bit lower on the totem pole as far as the, the bias plus is concerned. But I really, really like the Lions. They look tight. They look tight. The defensive secondary is much improved. It's not perfect, but it's much improved. They already had a good pass rush. Um, Goff looks confident. He looks strong. And Amon Ra St. Brown does not have to carry them in the passing game anymore because Jameson Williams has burst onto the scene. A lot of people don't remember this guy. A couple of years ago, he was at Alabama, and he was killing everybody at Alabama. And in the last game of the season, before he went into the draft, he got a knee injury, and he had to sit out. Then he got healthy, and when he came back, he got caught gambling, and he had to serve a suspension. So he only played the last few games last season, didn't really get in sync with the rest of the offense, didn't get a chance to show what he can do. But now, with a full training camp under his belt, this boy is a speed burner, got good hands and runs good routes. Uh, I will have to, as much as I like the Bucks, and as much as I'm rooting for uh, Baker Mayfield, this game looks like a lock for the Lions at home. A lock? Did you a use a four-letter word, lock? It's a lock. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Ben. Oh, I'll tell you why it's a lock also. About four guys on the Buccaneers' defense went down with injuries, and I don't think they're going to play this week. Okay. Well, that would, that would add something. That, yeah, that doesn't help them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going against the bias, going with the Lions. All right, Benny. Next up, bias plus of 15 here. We got the Colts versus the Packers, and that bias plus of 15 favors the Colts. And it probably should favor the Colts, depending on whether or not Love is out. Is he out for the next few games? Are they pretty much dependent now on Malik Willis? Ugh. Yeah, that doesn't even sound right, man. <laughs> that doesn't even sound right. Jordan Love is out with a sprained MCL. The MCL is the same ligament that I damaged when I was in college. It's not fun. It's a long rehab if he had to get surgery. Luckily for him, doesn't look like he's going to have to. But a sprain means somewhere between three and six weeks. Uh, they did not put him on IR, which means they expect him to be at back on the short end of that. Uh, maybe in three weeks, maybe in four. So that would be a good thing for them if he is able to come back. After all, it is just a sprain. But in the meantime, yeah, Malik Willis, who just got there like yesterday, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, uh, is going to have to carry these guys. The third string quarterback has been there for a season. He was there last year. But obviously they went and got Malik Willis because they didn't believe in that guy totally. They think Malik Willis has a more similar skill set to um, Jordan Love and he would be a better backup. I will agree with them if, in fact, he shows that he can throw the ball at least a little bit, okay? They got a good run game, but the Packers' thing is using all those wide receivers they got, Jaden Reed, uh, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, they have a plethora of young wideouts. They're all looking for the ball. I don't know if Malik Willis is going to be able to get that done. Um, they are at home, however. But you know what? I'm going to go with Anthony Richardson and the Colts. I think they're more settled in, a uh, lot less disruption. Uh, Richardson looked good running the ball and throwing the ball. His accuracy was a little bit off, but I think he'll get better as time goes by. Again, this is another guy who's coming back from an injury. He had a shoulder last year, so he's got some rust to knock off. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Colts in this one. Am I remembering correctly? Didn't he drop, like, a couple bombs last week? Like, Oh, yeah, he's got a, he's got a cannon. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this is the second coming of Cam Newton. Everybody and he's, saying that, you he's know? bigger than Cam. I, I know. I'm not, I, I wasn't the biggest Cam Newton fan, and, and I thought he ran too much. But um, 
Anthony Richardson, I mean, he dropped them. He put some, and he, the feet didn't even look like they were set. He was throwing that thing like 60 yards in the air. So, and Malik Willis actually has that similar uh, athletic ability, I think. You know, he hasn't been in the system, obviously, as long, you know. As right, it, he hasn't been in the system, and he hasn't proven that he can lead teams with his arm. Yeah, he hasn't proven that. But athletically, he, I think they're kind of similar. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, the defense is going to have to ball out, and they're going to have to run the ball, and they're going to have to move it and put points on the board. Field goals, whatever they got to do to hang in this game. All right, all right. Well, you're, so you're sticking with the bias, going with the Colts. Yes, I am. All right. We'll be keeping a record of this, buddy. Ah. Uh, the Cleveland Brown versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bias plus of nine favors the Jaguars. Okay. Not a big bias, but the road team is getting the bias. Again, they did better uh, average net point-wise in week one. But I'll tell you the truth. The Jags are in need of a win. It's crazy. I watched the program today. They were talking about, is this week being week two a must win for this team or that team? I think it's a must win for the Jags. They looked bad last week. They really did. They started out well, but then they kind of fell apart. Speaking of falling apart, the Cleveland Browns <laughs> are a bit of a mess right now. And they got this Deshaun Watson thing hanging over their head. Not only is he possibly going to get suspended again for the same crap, but he didn't play well at all. He looked horrible. Uh, and I will say this but last off the field scenario uh, does seem to come from the same time frame as his other stuff. It doesn't look like it's something new. No, it's not new. Yeah, it's not new. So right. I even I even heard a, a theory that the Browns dug this one up so they could try to get out of his contract. <laughs> I don't I don't think they would be that devious. The Browns but, dug it up so that they can get out. So, okay. It's funny that they would want to get out of a contract for what? Uh, behavior unbecoming or something like that when they gave well, him the I don't know how they would do it, but well, if I mean, they condemn this guy I mean, you gotta think it'd be it'd be someone, you know, that rumor. If it had any truth to it, have to assume that by finding this, it would help them get out of the contract. So there must be something in the contract about behavior, or whatever. Which oh yeah yeah yeah, they did talk about that. They did talk about that. Now there's there are things in the contract about what can happen to him and what can't happen to him if, in fact he has some more problems in relation to the past problems, but I'm not exactly hundred percent sure what, what is what. So yeah. I'm not gonna and and, and again, yeah. this but is yes, coming. there is language like that yeah. in the contract, but they don't have anything current that he's done. So they would no. dig this up and, and, and then they've already, they, they, they signed this contract with that information, with those activities already known. Right. And what he's trying to do now, I believe is prove that this particular one, should have been taken care of with all the other ones. In other words, you know, his his settlements and all that stuff, this should be under that same umbrella. I, I don't know if it is or not. Yeah, I, I don't know if the person I, I don't know if the person accused him with the other group. It seems like this Yeah, I don't either. I don't think they they don't think it's coming did. out now, but it's from back then. It's a right, it's from back then, from but back I don't then. think she was part of the initial Right, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. bottom line, bias plus nine favors the Jaguars. What do you got? I'm going to go with the Jags. I think they're going to pull this one out. I, I, the, the, the Browns' defense is supposed to – we're finding out some things early here. Some of these defenses that were supposed to be really good top-notch defenses are showing that they have some weaknesses, and the Browns are one of them. Some fantasy sites had the Browns as the number one defense going in to the season, and they did not look like it at all to me. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Jaguars on this one. All right, going with the Jags, going with the bias. Next up, we have my beloved 
San Francisco, 49ers against the Minnesota Vikings. Sam Darnold just left us. And as a matter of fact, somebody said something to the effect that they thought he benefited from being with yes. the Niners. You know? I agree. Yeah, benefited. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and what also is good for him is he went from one really smart, offensive minded, stable, uh, great play caller to another one. So their head coach, Kevin O'Connell is very similar to Shanahan in his demeanor, uh, being a really top notch play caller, very quarterback centric type of head coach. So that only helps Darnold also. He played really well. I could just say, well, of course he played well because he played the Giants, but he actually played really well. And the Vikings defense is one that a lot of people were not talking about, but looks like they're going to be really tough. However, bro, your squad looked amazing, okay, especially in the run game. That offensive line, and I heard the guys on TV saying, well, they got this guy, he's, he's a new guy, and they always got to run to the left because that's where Trent Wave. No, sir. They were pulling. They were blowing dudes out. They were bowling them over. And Jordan Mason's a beast. All my fantasy teams, except for maybe one or two, if I got McCaffrey, I made sure in the later rounds I got Jordan Mason. Just because of the calf issue. I didn't I didn't know that he wasn't going to play in that first game. But I said, well, if the calf, if the calf is still bothering him. I better get his back up in case he has to miss a game or two. And sure enough, the first game, he can't play, and this boy comes out and looks tremendous, tremendous. And he's faster than I thought he was. He's, he's, he can pick him up and put him down, man. He runs with good power. Or I should say he runs with really good power and good speed. So I believe that um, the Niners will beat the Vikings in Minnesota with a dominant run game and Purdy only throwing when he needs to, keeping the offense balanced and a strong defense. Oh, Fred Werner is looking like defensive player of the year already. First game. He's all over the field. He's, he's oh, God, he's a monster. I reminded yeah. a friend of ours when we were talking about our running backs. Well, first of all, I always think about you because you're always the one that says that um, Shanahan – finds these running backs. He's, he always finds running backs. I mean, we've got running backs all over the league now that he's yep. found and moved them on. And I had to remind yep. our friend that uh, that was our third string running back because Elijah yep. Mitchell, our second string, is out. Right. <laughs> so that was that's the backup, but he's the third string. So, and the crazy thing is, Jeff Wilson, who's now on the Dolphins, was the third string, and Mason was behind him. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy yeah. So that's one thing Shanahan can do. The bias is only plus one favoring the Vikings. Yeah, well, I'm not going to worry about the bias and how much it is, how big or small it is this early. I really just believe that uh, the Niners are the better team, no doubt. All right. Ah, thank you. Next up. This should be an interesting game because speaking of running the ball, you got two teams here who really ran the ball well last week. Ooh, this the, is a tough the Patriots and the Seahawks. Um, bias plus of eight favors the Patriots. And again, isn't it that Patriot defense that just seems to keep them in games even when their offense is not quite gelling or not quite there? They had a running game, but uh, that defense is still there. Yeah, the defense is still there. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'll tell you. Well, first of all, the head coach is a defensive player, and he's an ex-Patriot player, and he's a Belichick disciple. So the defense is probably always going to be. Um, but they made sure, even with all the issues they had at quarterback and not knowing if or when Drake May will be ready, um, they made sure 
that they kept the offensive line intact and they held on to Ramondre Stevenson, who is a very, very big, strong, tough runner. So, yes, a uh, good defense in the run game will pull you through a lot of situations that the Patriots have. And really good defense in a run game is exactly what the Seahawks are going to bring to this game also. Um, they unleashed it on the Broncos last week, and the Broncos could do nothing about it. Um, whew, I got numbers on this one. 33 total rushes, 146 yards, 20 of those 33, and 103 of those yards and a touchdown came from Kenny Walker the third. So this is going to be Kenny Walker the third versus Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, the defenses might be a wash, although I believe I'm going to give the Seattle defense the edge, and I'm going Seattle? to go Seattle. Excuse me. Seattle defense the edge. Yes, sir. I'm going to give Seattle defense the edge, and I'm going to go with them to win the game. All right, going against the bias, going with Seattle. All righty. I don't know, Benny. Don't know. I keep thinking about Seattle last year, and it was their defense that uh, sold them out in many cases. That was last year. That was last year. That is true. How about the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 the only team I had any family that played for, versus the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Titans quarterback <laughs> kind of self-destructed last week. The Jets quarterback had a couple throws that made that, that made you just reminisce about what used to be with Aaron Rodgers. But again, they played my Niners, who were hell bent on running the ball down their throat. And uh, although their uh, head coach was a former defensive coordinator for the Niners, he had no answers. So now the bias plus because of all of that favors of all teams, the Titans. <laughs> not only did he not have an answer but people are upset that he didn't seem to have any answer at all the way for them to get dominated on the ground like that after being the defense score now of course he's been away from the Niners for a couple of seasons now so I'm sure everything's not exactly the same as it was when he was there but still they put up little to no resistance against that run game I don't know that the Titans will be able to run the ball like that. We're talking about Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears, uh, who are nowhere near Jordan Mason, neither one of them. Um, but uh, the crazy thing is, as good as the Jets' defense has been touted to be, they showed some weaknesses against the run. And if the Titans can put something together scheme-wise, that can take advantage of that, this is going to be a tough game for the Jets. Also, again, quarterback, I don't care how great he was. He's coming off of an injury, hasn't played, didn't play in the preseason. It's not the same as scrimmaging another team in practice or practicing against your own guys. And it showed. He looked a little clunky in the pocket to me. He wasn't moving really, really well. I don't know if he was favoring his Achilles or he just wasn't comfortable from lack of, you know what I mean, playing in a real game. Um, however, I can't believe in Will Levis. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just can't. I just can't. And even if they can run the ball on them, eventually they're going to have to throw it. And when they do, I believe that the Jets secondary will wake up and take care of business. So I'm going to take the Jets. Going against the bias, going with the Jets. Now, I, I made a note. It says Aaron Rodgers leads the league in touchdowns off of free plays. In other yeah. words, he really knows how to pull you off sides. And then when you do, he, he's going. He, that's how he's scoring on us, straight down he's the middle. Deep. He's and, going deep. And what the one guy pointed out that – it makes a lot of sense, and just as a coaching point, um, our defensive – I don't know if he was an end or a linebacker um, – was offsides, right? Right. He started off, he crossed the line, and he realized he was offsides, he stopped. And right. And said, once you're offsides – Might as well keep going. Play. You know? Right. 
don't stop. Keep going, you know, and try to disrupt because if not, Aaron's going deep on you, and they wind up scoring. So a uh, couple couple good points of, uh, you know, of uh, knowledge coming out of that game. But you're going with the Jets over the Titans because you cannot believe in Will Levis. <laughs> okay. All right. Next up, we have your New York football Giants versus the Washington Commanders. And I think I misspelled that, but okay. Um, commanders. And uh, by a special five favors the Commanders, Benny. Yeah. <laughs> if there's going to be a game at, at this point, okay, before before last week, I'm looking at the Giants and I'm saying, you know what? If Daniel Jones can connect with Malik Neighbors and Devin Singletary can actually enhance this run game, we could maybe win six games. I'm not even looking at playoffs. I understand my team isn't very good right now. I understand we have issues on the offensive line. I understand we have issues in the secondary. I get it, okay? I was looking for six wins. At this point, after seeing that debacle on Sunday, I'm looking at three or four wins. No. But this should be one of them. This? But I don't think it will be. <laughs> I think Jaden Daniels is going to run for two or three touchdowns on these boys. And he might even throw for one or at least drive them down enough where they can get a couple of field goals. And Daniel Jones is going to crap the bed. And I'm picking the commanders with the bias to win this game. I just, I do right now in my head while I'm talking to you, I'm chanting Drew Locke. Drew Lock, Drew Lock. <laughs> oh my goodness! One of the somebody on their defense, the Vikings, right? Somebody on the Vikings defense was quoted as saying that he began to feel sorry. I, I heard that. You I heard think that? that's. I think that's despicable, and I think he should never have said that. Well, that's some bull. That's embarrassing. Well, it was crazy. It was crazy. But you are going with the commanders. Yes. And the bias. All right. Next up, Benny, we have a division matchup. We have those Cardinals versus those Rams. And they came out a statistical tie. The bias plus is zero. <laughs> and that includes both points and turnovers. <laughs> okay. So there you I go. Like it. You can't lose like with the stuff we use. <laughs> so Cardinals at home. Doesn't really matter. Arizona, LA, no big deal. Division matchup. The Rams are better than the Cardinals. I'm sorry. I'm not even going to get technical about this. The Rams went into Detroit and almost pulled that game out. In fact, they didn't lose it till uh, half until uh, overtime. So I really like the Rams. I think Stafford is on the money. Kyron Williams is running well, and Cooper Cup is back. So it's weird though. Cup gets hurt. Who in the who in the Kuka? <laughs> I like that. Who in the Kuka? I like that. <laughs> Puka Nakua blew up last year. Now Puka Nakua is hurt, and Cooper Cup looks like. The Cooper Cup of like two or three years ago. This guy's all over the place, man. He's not super fast, but his route running is immaculate. He just continues to get open time after time after time. Zone or man, doesn't matter. Rams are a better team than the Cardinals. I'm going with the Rams. And then the Rams get run over, run on that. I'm just remembering somebody saying yes. the other team remembered that Aaron Donald wasn't there. Like, oh, he ain't here. Let's go. Yes. No. Well, let's face it. The Lions got a great one-two punch. Jameer Gibbs with his speed and the shakes and the catching ability. David Montgomery with pretty good speed and uh, and the power. Uh, yeah, and especially Montgomery. Montgomery is a complete bat. He can catch the ball, not quite as well as Jameer Gibbs, but he can catch the ball. 
and he runs with power and decent speed. And he had a really great game uh, that, 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 that did hurt the Rams. But, uh, and, and I'll tell you the truth, James Conner for the Cardinals is probably going to try to do the same thing. Oh yeah. But I don't funny. know. Yeah. I don't know that the Cardinals can sustain that. And I don't think the Cardinals uh, defense is going to have an answer for Kyron Williams and, and, and Matt Stafford. Just quickly, do you have a comment on the Cardinals' uh, top draft choice at wide receiver? Marvin Harrison Jr. He had one catch, right? I think he had one catch on like two or three targets. He'll probably go uh, – I'm going to predict he has six or more catches on him. At least 10 targets this week. Okay, but it's not going to be enough. Won't be enough. The Rams will still win. Rams going to win. All right, then going with the Rams, and we have a zero bias. All right, that's it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. It does happen. All right, so we got the Steelers and the Broncos. We got Russell Wilson probably standing on the sideline, and the um, Coach for the Broncos probably giving them the, the stink eye because uh, I don't think they got along with the darn last year. Um, Fields is you ain't got time to be nice. worrying about Russell Wilson. Uh, okay, we'll see. And Bo Nix for the uh, for the Broncos. Bo Nix has been anointed as a starter for the Broncos. Uh, I don't think that's going to change at this point. Once they threw him out there, he didn't stink it up. So I think they're going to ride him to the end uh, and see what they can do. It's trial by fire at this point. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're, they're not real good. They're not real good. They're going to have problems. He's going to take a lot of bumps and bruises. Um, the Steelers are coming in here. Uh, Justin Fields is now the starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers because Russell Wilson is still complaining about a sore calf. It is my prediction, I believe I said this before, but if I didn't, I at least thought it, so I'll say it now. I believe that before the season was over, Justin Fields is going to end up being the starting quarterback of this team. I believe they named Russell Wilson as the starter before the season started because they felt like it was the right thing to do. Take the veteran, the guy with the most success, and put him out there and let him start the season. It'd be better to start him, and if he falters, go to the younger guy, then start the younger guy, and if he falters, bring in the veteran. I believe that's what they were thinking. But now that he's hurting a little bit, and Justin Fields got in the first real game and didn't embarrass himself, he, in fact, played fairly well. He didn't throw any touchdown passes, but he also, if I remember correctly, did not turn the ball over, which is extremely important. They rushed the ball well. Najee Harris had a good day, and Justin Fields helped with that rushing, and that seemed to be a little weakness for the Falcons' defense. A lot of these teams are acting like they can't defend the run early on here, and I fought the coaches for that in the preseasons and in these camps. They don't do a lot of live hitting. I understand why, but when you do that, when you have a camp like that, your first few games, you're going to miss a lot of tackles, and that's going to happen. Some teams it happens to quite often or, or pretty regular. The Eagles are one of them. Some teams it doesn't. But anyway, um, I believe that the Steelers will win this game. I don't think that the Broncos have enough on defense to handle – a very tight, um, very simplistic script that the offensive coordinator for Steelers is going to give Justin Fields. Keep him out of trouble. Don't let him get in harm's way. Don't get him. let him get in situations where they have to depend on his arm. They want to throw it when they want to throw it, and they want to run it as much as possible. And, of course, they're going to need their defense to show up and put a lot of pressure on Bo Nix force him into mistakes, get turnovers, maybe to get a pick six or something, blah, blah, blah. Keep themselves in scoring position and let Chris Boswell 
keep kicking them field goals. That's the plan. I'm going with the Steelers. All right, plus 30 favorites the Steelers. Ben's going with the bias. All righty, Benny. Now, this is the team that everybody said was the kryptonite for the Chiefs. That is your Cincinnati Bengals. And the bias plus is 21 favoring the Chiefs. And if, and if no one, if anyone saw James Worthy on that sweep, <laughs> first sweep, even the cheetah tw uh, tweeted, that boy be rolling. <laughs> that boy be rolling. Yeah, that's, that was crazy. There's a lot of fast guys in the league. I know people still lean toward um, toward the cheetah. But Jameson Williams for the Lions and Xavier Worthy with the Chiefs, them boys can flat out fly, man. They are super fast. Um, let's see what we got here. So, yeah, the Bengals are supposed to be the team that the Chiefs, I know they don't fear anybody, but they're the one team that seemed to be the kryptonite for the Chiefs. Unfortunately, another thing that hangs over the uh, Bengals' heads is the fact that they usually get off the slow starts. Several times they've started off the season one and three, oh and two, you know, that kind of thing. So this being the first game of the season, um, that didn't bode well for them. And in fact, they ended up losing their game. Um, trying to find some numbers here I thought I had, but I can't find them. The bottom line is there's still some question about Joe Burrow's wrist. He seems to say, he seems to believe that everything is fine. He's been seen shaking it and flexing it but he claims he just does that to keep it loose, not because it's hurting him. Uh, that remains to be seen. He did have some errant throws, so I'm starting to believe that he may not be 100% all the way with that wrist. Um, the Chiefs, meanwhile, are still the Chiefs. Even though they had a little trouble last week with the Ravens, I don't think that um, – the Bengals are going to present that kind of a problem to them. Also, they're home again, and they're really tough at Arrowhead. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I'm not going to worry too much about the Chiefs. Pacheco looks good. Worthy looks good. Uh, Rishay Rice looks good. Uh, the defense looks pretty good. And the Bengals still haven't signed their number one receiver, right? Jamar Chase still is not signed. He claims he played the game with a stomach virus. Um, T. Higgins, the other receiver, who they refused to sign and put the franchise tag on, he's got a hamstring, so he's going to miss this game, and who knows how many more. Uh, yeah, I, I I can't go with the with the Bengals on this one. I got to pick the Chiefs. All right, going with the bias, plus 21, going with the Chiefs. All righty, Benny, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. All right, this should be fun. The Bears, the Chicago Bears versus the Houston Texans. Bias plus of 10, Benny favors the Bears. <laughs> okay, that's not going to happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Gonna I'm taking happen. the Houston Texans in this one. I'm not even going to play around with this one, okay? The <laughs> Houston Texans, the Houston Texans offense didn't seem to be able to get any better after we looked at them last year. Then Stefan Diggs shows up. He didn't have no whole bunch of catches, but guess what? Scored two touchdowns. You know? Not one, two. Nico Collins had a day. Yeah. Yeah. He had a day. They, didn't, they barely use Tank Dell. Their situation receiver-wise is so good that this week, Nico could have another day. Stephon Diggs might catch three passes, and Tank Dell could cost, catch two touchdowns. That's how crazy this offense is. What but the big Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. The big deal on this offense is Joe Mixon. There you go. Joe Mixon is the big deal in this offense. Now they have a real run game, okay? Not to mention 
The offensive line looks really good, but Joe Mixon is just a different kind of runner from Devin Singletary, who actually had a career year with the Texans last year. But now, unfortunately for him, he's with the Giants. Uh, hopefully they'll hold on to him till they get that offensive line fixed. Um, why am I talking about the Giants? Take Houston. Caleb Williams did basically nothing in that game last week. He was erratic. He looked like he wasn't sure if he should run. Sometimes when he went, when running was when the run lane was clear, he stopped and threw. Sometimes he should have stayed in the pocket. He broke out of the pocket when he didn't have to. Uh, he's a mess. He's a mess right now. I'm I'm gonna go with Houston on this one. All right, going with the Texans, going against the bias. And again, I don't expect that Chicago defense will have the same level of success against Houston that they had last week, which made all the difference in that game. So, and uh, it's just interesting to see the number one of this year versus the number two of last year when it comes to quarterbacks. So, got my eye on this game here. I'll be looking forward to it. That was Sunday night, Benny. This is the Monday night matchup. The Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Atlanta Falcons led by your boy Kirk Cousins and Jalen Hurts. Who will have a mind fart first is the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's still questions about Jalen Hurts if he's got his head together. Uh, questions about his relationship with Nick Sirianni, the head coach, and all that stuff. I, I believe that um, they're probably pretty much over that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be optimistic about that. Excuse me, the Eagles have way too much good stuff going for them to let themselves get bogged down with that mess again. I'm thinking that they learned their lesson from last season. The Falcons, they got some pieces, but they also have Kirk Cousins. And you know I'm a Kirk Cousins defender, but Kirk Cousins hasn't played a real football game. This is kind of the same thing with, with Aaron Rodgers. He hasn't played in a real football game since, like, week eight of last season. He didn't play in any preseason games, got his reps in practice, and I'm sure he scrimmaged against somebody, whoever they had come in. But I tell you what, he ain't ready for prime time, man. He's not moving well. He looks erratic. He had bad throws. Um, I don't think it's a situation where, you know, he's on a new team and he's playing with a new scheme. I just don't think he's physically right yet. You know, when these guys have knee injuries and Achilles and stuff like that, it usually takes them – an entire season before they really feel like themselves again. Now, it's not as bad at the quarterback as quarterback position as it would be at the wide receiver or the running back position. But still, first game with the live bulls flying, he really was not ready. He really was not ready. And I don't see him being ready this week against uh, an Eagles defense that's probably going to send the house at him because they can see he's not moving really well. Um, they're going to have their hands full with B. John Robinson. But again, if the offense scores points, they can't lean on B. John, and then they'll be in trouble. So let's I go. I saw an announcement right before we went on. Um, it looks as if N'Kobe Dean has been named middle line, starting middle linebacker for the Eagles. So. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm not thrilled about that. He's obviously, um, I mean, he's been on the team, what's this, like his third year? First two years, he was basically a bust. He couldn't even get on the field. Now, all of a sudden, they got a new defensive coordinator who seems to have either woken him up or sees enough that he feels like if I give him a chance, he might come through for me. One or the other. We'll see. All right. Well, Benny, that wraps up the Bias Plus reports for week two of the 2024-2025 season. 
that was it was uh it's gonna be a good week. I'm really looking forward to a few of these matchups, man. And uh I think that we're gonna have some really good games coming in as we get into the second game of what we call the second preseason. And I just again want to remind people to uh, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell. And make sure that you're ready as we put out our video <laughs> on a weekly basis. Okay, Benny, we're going to take a quick look at the Ben and Barry on Football Facebook page. There's a couple things uh, maybe worth mentioning that might be interesting. Uh, ben, did you happen to see somebody wearing a guardian cap during the game last week? I thought I saw somebody. What team was that? Oh, uh, man, I wasn't sure, but I know I saw one. And uh, they, uh, they're they talking about the new helmet coverings for the 2024 season. So people are doing it. It takes one or two guys, and then next thing you know, you'll see them spread. It'll spread like a, like a virus there. But uh, it didn't look bad, and they, it was in the colors of the helmet, so I didn't really notice it too much. As a matter of fact, I got to take a second look. But I think you're going to start to see a little bit of that. Uh, we talked about Tyreek Hill needing four words uh, to describe – um, the uh, Chiefs' new speed demon. You know, that boy be rolling, as he said there. Uh, no CMC for the Niners. We talked a little bit about that already. Uh, <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny. Baker Mayfield becoming better than Deshaun Watson is only something that would happen to the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, crazy. So Sometimes these memes are funny. We got a little video here of a uh, 16-year-old gold medalist Quincy Williams. Talk about having a speedster on your football team. <laughs> this guy's a gold, he's a high school gold medal sprinter. He's just running by everybody here. I have to uh, double check and make sure he's still playing football. Uh, okay, I'm assuming. Because he may not be. It might not be. That's a good point here. Um, Benny, this report here that Deion Sanders has reportedly told the University of Colorado band it can't play the school's fight song after Shador Sanders throws a touchdown so that they can play uh, his rap song instead. I think that's ridiculous. I think Deion's going a bit far here. What do you think about that? Well, did you read the article? I didn't read the whole article. It's a non-story. It's not true. It's not true. So it's the article true. made all of this up, and then in the article itself says it's not true. I'm glad it's to hear true. that. I'm truly glad to hear Well, that. I don't know if it's in that article, but I read another article, and I saw an interview with Dion. Okay. He denied it, and the other article said that it's not true, that whenever he throws or runs a touchdown pass in, or throws a touchdown pass, or runs for a touchdown, as soon as he scores, they put his song on, but it's a snippet. They shut it down, and they go right to the fight song. Ah, ah, okay. Partially true. Partially. Okay, all right. Well, it's not true at all. The article says he told them, don't play the fight song, and that's not true. Okay. He's, he told, he must have told them just to hold off before they play this like, fight song. Man. So if you said they play a snippet, the article to... doesn't say he told them anything. Oh, he so he's telling them to do something they're doing without him saying. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, that, that clarifies it a little bit. That clarifies it a little bit. All right. So he didn't... But the person who wrote the story, if they were at the game, they would have heard the band play the fight song. So this this how stuff gets started, you know? This this not. <laughs> Believe me, Dion's under, in, under enough stress <laughs> without worrying about some crap like that. All right. Good enough. Good enough. All right, Betty. Well, that's all I got for today. You got anything else? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These guys are all Niners. Oh, I see. The, the, the position is where they rank as far as how much they're paid. 
with everybody else that plays the position. So Nick Bosa makes more money than all the other pass rushers in the league. He's first. Brandon Ayuk is fifth in money with all the other wide receivers in the league, and so on and so forth. Trent Williams is third. Debo's 14th. Javon Hargrave is 11th. Fred Warner, second. McCaffrey, first. Kittle, third. Juszczyk, highest paid fullback, first. And Brock Part Birdie is 79th. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> guy was ranting and raving. He says, we talk about these teams trying to get to the Super Bowl while the quarterback's still on their rookie contract, or maybe they get their first, you know, contract after their rookie deal is up and the window's open and then the window closes. He's like, when is the 49ers window going to close? <laughs> it's wide open. <laughs> Well, it's, it's going to get tighter when they do have to pay Purdy. And let me mention, I'm glad you brought this up because I mentioned it earlier, but one of the friends of the show, one Mr. Mark Russell, a.k.a. the worst Eagle fan ever. <laughs> worst Eagle fan ever. And he, he's beginning to actually take that moniker on with pride. <laughs> that figures. But he believes that uh, Parsons for the uh, the Cowboys, their edge rusher, yeah, that when he renews his contract, he's going to renew it for at least fifty mil average per year. A linebacker. Well, his his argument is he can play linebacker, he can play edge rusher. He's a multi talented guy, and even though you mentioned Nick Bosa is what making thirty five. He said 50. And when he said it, I said, I'm going to hold you to that number. <laughs> I'm like, no, you can't get away. Okay. We're going to hold you Mark, to that. Mark, let me look into the camera, Mark. I'm looking, I hope I'm looking at you. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Nick Bosa makes 34 million. He's the top paid as a pass rusher. And Fred Warner makes. Close to twenty million. Much less. He's the he's he's the second highest paid linebacker. Okay. The only way he gets fifty million is you take Bosa's thirty four and add Warner's twenty to it. <laughs> Come on, man. He's one person. Can't play two positions. He can't one play. Time. And believe me, teams don't play that mess. Remember Le'Veon Bell. Mm. Yeah, uh, he tried to pull that. I'm a receiver running back. I'm a running receiver. Yeah. Two years later, he was out of football. Went to the Jets. Never heard from him again. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Don't play those games. True. I believe he will surpass one of those guys. He might make 35, 36, 37. But he ain't gonna make no fifty. I told him if he waits two years, he might get there because by that time the salary cap will be so much higher that everybody's gonna be up there. But I yeah. don't see fifty for a rusher. I just don't nah. see it, you know. Nah, but he's on his fourth year now. He's coming. I don't out think he had his option year. yet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he had his option year yet. So he's got to play out this season. Then of course they're going to exercise his fifth year option, uh, at which time he probably will start making demands, and then Jerry will drag it out <laughs> till a week before the day before the first game. They'll do this. It's crazy, man. Dude, they do it. They do it. But they want us. That's their money thing because by the time they drag drag it out, everybody else has up the contract value, and now you're paying high the higher top dollar. So. Jerry don't care. He has the money. Yeah. It's not even really about the money. About it's that. about him driving up how much his team is worth. Every day, every sports channel talks about the Dallas Cowboys. In season, off season, he keeps the drama going so the Dallas Cowboys get mentioned every day on every show. All right. You think he had to wait till the 
two hours before the game <laughs> to sign Dak. That don't even sound right. He couldn't hey, get well, that deal you know, last him week. Having um, uh, Mike uh, and Lynch, you know, from my team, you know, from the school of let's wait, let's hold it off as long as we can for whatever no good reason, you know. Yeah, Lynch, Lynch probably didn't have to wait that long either, but I understand kind of why he did what he did. He really didn't want to put that money out. And I think Ayuk was playing hardball when he didn't have to either. Well, but this crazy. Dak thing, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. There's no way Dak was asking for more than $60 million a year. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. <laughs> All right, Benny. Well, that's it for me. I just Done. want to remind everybody to, again, push the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and visit www.benandbarryonfootball.com. All right. Take it easy, y'all. Enjoy the games. Uh,